Okay, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, colleagues. I'm, I'm really uh, happy and thankful for having given this opportunity to speak uh, globally about EMS. I must say that I will not speak much because I have um, uh, Dario and Joy who uh, uh, experience EMS and EMS Cameroon who will also speak so I will uh, be more global. So uh, the title of my talk is uh, Towards the Capacity Building of the Next Generation of African Leading Scientists. Here I just want to speak about EMS. EMS is African Institute for Mathematical Sciences. And uh, this is the first network of center of excellence in Africa dealing in mathematical sciences and uh, created in 2003 in South Africa by uh, Professor Neil uh, Turok. Basically, we are building a comprehensive ecosystem for knowledge-led development of Africa. And as a network, we have uh, a vision and a mission. Uh, this is the vision, a prosperous Africa propelled by innovative education and mathematical sciences. And the mission to, in, to achieve the vision is to empower talented young Africans to be creative leaders in science and uh, technology. We recently developed a five, a 10 year strategic plan. And uh, within this 10 year strategic plan, we revise the values, only one aspect of the value. Now the four values at EMS are excellence, still the same, Pan-Africanism, equity and inclusion, and finally uh, respect. Uh, within this uh, 10 years uh, strategic plan, we have uh, five uh, goals, which we call seed goals. The first is scaling up. This is to move from recruiting uh, 300 students per year in the whole network to recruit 1,000, for example. And the second is still education. The third goal is employment. We uh, want to be careful by ensuring that the graduate, the student we train are employed at the end. And finally, the discovery, which is there for uh, innovation and research and innovation. Um, the activities or the infrastructure we have, we have the M Center of Excellence. We have six because the last one was created last July uh, 2023, four months ago or so. Um, the first center was created at uh, in South Africa in Cape Town in 2003. The second one was created in uh, Senegal in Bou 2011. The third was created in Accra in Biriwa has now moved back to was created in Ghana in Biriwa and has now moved to Accra. That was in 2012. The fourth was created in uh, Cameroon Limbe, which you know very well in 2013, and the fifth was created in Rwanda, Kigali, 2016. The last center to be created is the EMS Research and Innovation Center, uh, which is, has been created in uh, Kigali, Rwanda, uh, last July. And this will be a center um, dedicated to research, doing research, training PhD students, and also supporting the local research center in all the five uh, other centers. And um, within EMS, we have uh, what we call uh, industry initiative, which is uh, a collection of uh, activities to build the bridge between industry and academia. Because in Africa, the link between industry and academia is quite weak and it is our responsibility to build this link to ensure that uh, solution, most of solution to our problems comes from Africa and in connection with uh, academia. 
We have the teachers training program, which consists in uh, building the capacity of those teaching math in secondary school so that we end up having a quality student at Ames in the future. And we have uh, two other programs, the Quantum Leap Africa and the Next Einstein uh, Forum. Um, talking about the center of excellence, you can see the location here, South Africa, Ghana, no, Senegal, Ghana, Cameroon, Rwanda, and Rwanda. And uh, basically, we are doing uh, in uh, term of training, uh, we have uh, the structural master program, which you know, the cooperative education program. This is uh, a program, professional program, I would say, combined with uh, internship uh, during which uh, students really utilize uh, the knowledge developed at Ames to address some of the problems faced by the company, by the industry. We have the African Master in Machine Intelligence Army. We have uh, another Master in Artificial Intelligence for Science at M South Africa, and a Master in uh, Malaria Modeling, this is in Rwanda. And there are and a Master in Mathematical Sciences for Teachers in uh, Ghana. And there will be more and more master. Now, coming back to research center located here, somewhere in uh, here in Kigali, um, they are focusing for now in uh, data science and also in mathematical modeling with application to health. And they are strongly supporting the research center, which are established in all the five uh, centers. And. Uh, in terms of achievement, uh, we have uh, trained over 3,000 alumni in 20 years and uh, from 44 African countries. And uh, out of those alumni, we have about uh, more than 450 who have completed their PhD, 23% being females and uh, about 400 who are also continue their PhD currently. And um, it's really important to mention that uh, more than one third of all the alumni trained at Ames are female, and 70% of those alumni remain in African continent. In terms of uh, capacity building of uh, teachers, we can say that uh, we have built capacity of more than 10,000 teachers in Cameroon, South Africa, Rwanda, and now Ghana. And basically, the, some of the modules we used in the capacity building are leadership and responsibility, planning of pedagogy activities, mathematical teaching and learning, and so on. And um, now, coming back to the a relation between uh, Ames and the Royal Statistical Society. I want to show you one slide which is really connected to what you do, which for me is important, is how students come to Ames. Because when Jane come to Ames or any other colleague, they come and meet students. This is how those students are selected. The condition to be selected at Ames for now is to be an African. Although when we will have capacity to welcome more students, we will be willing to acknowledge, to include exchange programs so that students from Europe and for other part of the world in a limited number can come uh, to study our aims to build uh, peace in the world and to build the living together and for the international integration. So you have to be African. Secondly, you should have completed four years training in higher education in any domain of science what with strong mathematics component. Applications are submitted uh, online in one uh, portal. And uh, we study, uh, admission is by study of academic performance, interview, and math test. And uh, the admission is highly selective because about for now, 300 are selected out of 6,000 applications. So this is about 55% success rate. And uh, gender is really important that at Ames, at least one third of candidates selected should be females. Not just because they are female, but capable females. 
So it's important for us to go out and hunt for capable females to join M's, and they are. Uh, it's important to discover them and convince them to cut at M's. And uh, the main objective here is to reach 50% of females. Uh, we provide full scholarship to all students, including transport and medical insurance. And the campus is residential with 24-7 uh, enabled learning environment. And uh, any student receive a laptop upon arrival and have full access to computer and to internet. I want to mention before my academy director, Daniel, will complement that um, we don't have many permanent lecturers, although there is a plan to have uh, some number, three, about five in any center. But basically, our lecturers are visiting lecturers coming from all over the world, including from UK, like you, including Nobel laureate film medalists. So we uh, there is a website where you are planned to apply to come to uh, and teach at EMS, and we also do uh, head hunting. If we look for someone to deliver specific courses, we go online and look for the profile and write to them directly, and in general, it works. Before stopping, I will do the transition for EMS Cameroon, you know well. Uh, this is a photo for the graduation, last graduation at EMS Cameroon. And um, in the location facility, we are currently uh, renting. And this is the photo of the center we are building. And you can see this is where we want to go. And uh, this is where we are now. I didn't have a recent photo today, but uh, all of this is completely finished now, including the plastrings. But still, this is the photo of the center we have built so far, and which is quite more advanced than this, but this is the photo I could easily find because I was hesitating if I should have slide or not, and I end, I decided to have slide and time was short. So um, I think Daniel will uh, say more, and uh, the colleagues who, um, spend time with us in Cameroon will, of course, say more. Our funding comes from uh, government, from foundation, from international organization, from alumni give back, and uh, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mama. That was really lovely. Hello, Daniel, when he gets there. Yes, Mama, could you stop sharing so that I could try to share? Uh, could you see my screen, please? Yes. OK. <laughs> If you could see my screen, I could then start. Uh, good afternoon. Would you like to see Daniel as well, if possible? Uh, come again, please, Tony. Could you see my screen? We could, we could see your screen. We haven't seen your face yet. Ah, oh, there you are. Ah. Uh, could you also see my face? Yep. Yeah, OK. <laughs> thank, th well thank you. Uh, and good afternoon once more to everyone. Uh, I will quickly uh, continue where Prof. Mama stopped. <clears throat> so I am Daniel Juvial Chetia, as most of you know me. And here I will share this slide. I, share, I have already shared this slide with Janina, who could share with all the team. Uh, for EMS Cameroon, <clears throat> if you click on this link, you will go directly to the website of EMS Cameroon and see most of the information I will discuss here. So, <clears throat> as already introduced by Prof. Mama, uh, most of our activities are about the, the training of the structural master and cooperative master students. We have some entrepreneurship weeks and programming forum give back activities, industry visit, local workshop, career fair, and partnership with academic institutions. 
Uh, I will just take the case of uh, this academy year to explain in detail how uh, EMS Cameroon is functioning. Uh, <clears throat> for the moment, we are able to select up to 60 students, uh, 50 uh, from the structural master and among the 50, 19 are females and 10 students are selected for the cooperative master among them four are females. So we have in total 60 students who are coming from 13 African countries and this is with 46 percent who are female. This is a good, a quite good number. The idea is to reach 50 percent female in the coming years and these are the countries uh, which are represented on campus for the moment. <clears throat> About the structure master, the duration is 10 months, the instruction language is English, and we select students from mathematics, physics, computer science, statistics, engineering background. And the, main, the three main streams we have at EMS Cameroon for the moment are the data science stream, the fundamental science, and climate science stream. And we, <coughs> these are uh, fields which are open and from which the student could easily attack the problems, the local problems, and solve the problems in the different community in Africa. And when we talk about data science or climate science, we are looking with uh, we are looking for application to health, energy, agriculture, which are very important for us in Africa for the moment. And when the students are here, they will go through three skill, uh, three phases, the skill phase, the review phase, and the essay phase. The, during the skill phase, they will attend three blocks of three weeks uh, courses each, and all the students are attending all the courses during each skill block. And the courses are delivered during a period of three weeks exactly during the skill and review phase. And for the review phase, students are, at, uh, students are only attending two courses per block, and this is for a total of six blocks. The essay phase <coughs> is as follow. We, uh, for example, next week we will send emails to potential supervisors to collect essay topics. And once the essay topics are collected, we will uh, uh, put the database at the disposal of the student uh, who have already uh, uh, filled a form telling us what are their research interests. And they will go through and select the topics which are important for them and start working by, by mid-March up to May. So the evaluation system, as uh, some of you know already, we have some pieces which are taking during the class period at least uh, four pieces per course. And assignments are sent to students and they will be done uh, at home, let's say at home, although they are all accommodated on campus. Uh, once they are done uh, with the assignment, they will submit it back for grading by the tutors and lecturers. And there is one assignment the first week, one assignment the second week. In the third week, we distribute assignment in groups to students. This is to allow uh, the interaction among the students and to improve their uh, presentation skills. And also to detect students who are facing a problem so that we could easily support them. And the grades are distributed like here. Uh, we have distinction, very good pass, good pass and pass. So when you have uh, less than 60% at M's, you, we, we say that you fail and you have to reset the course. Uh, for the cooperative master, uh, the duration is 18 months. Uh, they typically do the same uh, courses like the student in the structural master, but in addition, <coughs> They will first take the research essay because a, a good a, a good uh, professional in company should have good research skills. This is why we allow them to first do the research essay, and after their research essay, when the structural master students are graduating, the cooperative master will go for internship and work on a concrete problem. 
that should the concrete problem encounter in that uh, company before they come back <coughs> and present their report. And after that, they will also graduate the, the, the next year. And here are some general statistics for EMS Cameroon. Since uh, it was uh, EMS Cameroon was created in 2013, we have already trained 400, about 445 students, uh, of which 36% are women from 27 African countries. And this is for both the structural and cooperative uh, master. And we have some success stories of our alumni that you can find on our web page on this link that you, can, you could easily click here and get uh, all uh, the success stories of some of our alumni. Now at EMS, <coughs> there is one p uh, key component which are the tutors. The tutors, uh, they are accommodated on campus, they support the lecturers and the students, they assist in the grading of quizzes and assignment, they prepare and deliver tutorial, they monitor the student. These are like uh, the good friends of the student with whom the first pick head of any student and they really follow up the student to make sure they support the weaker one and continue encouraging the strongest one to move forward. And each year we are having, for example, eight tutors. This year we have eight from four African countries with two women. Some are already PhD orders and others are about to finish with their PhDs. Apart the so we have the student, the tutors, and then the lecturers who are coming from, for this academic year, we are expecting 38 lecturers from 15 countries with four women. We, I would really like to say here that we are, uh, we, we would like to have as many uh, women lecturers as possible. So maybe Jen and Julia, you should let us know how to uh, increase this number so that we have as much uh, female lecturers as possible. And these are some the countries where our lecturers will be coming from. In addition to uh, the teaching, uh, we have some local workshop and programming forums and these are done during three different uh, reading weeks. And the main idea is to strengthen the entrepreneurship and professional development skills of our students. We don't just uh, want any all of them to go to academy but or research. We really want many of them to, to start working on concrete real life problems in Africa. And we as uh, during this uh, week also, we try to improve the programming skills of our students and also their data science skills. And these are very uh, weeks which are really important in their career. Uh, here, I just put some uh, photos to explain the Irish uh, events, some of the Irish. These are students, for example, who are training uh, the staff in the hospital nearby on the use of computers. We have uh, the students who are supporting secondary school students. We have students who are supporting uh, orph orphanage children. And <clears throat> we have uh, our students who are also supporting a secondary school student in Sonara. I think Dario was one of uh, these, uh, uh, was part of this team. So in addition to all of this, uh, we have a weekly seminar every Wednesday. And <clears throat> even those who are not uh, delivering courses at EMS uh, this year are also encouraged to uh, attend or to deliver a talk. Uh, we, as Promama said in his speech, uh, we are really concerned with, uh, strength, with the strengthen of the bridge between the academy and the industry and for this reason we usually organize the career fair to showcase the achievement of our students and what they could do for local companies and this is very important also for those not only for the cooperative master student but also for those who are going uh, to continue <clears throat> somewhere else so for the partnership with academic institution we have uh, already a 
we have a local association with the University of Boya, and for international association, uh, we are connected with the University of Kassel, uh, Court Wars, and the Royal Statistical Society. There are also other, uh, many other uh, agreements that we signed uh, last year, for example, with some university in, in Canada. Uh, Promama just uh, show some. Promama show already uh, uh, one the general view of this building. We have uh, you can see here that we are already done with the decking, the last one, and from here you have the sea. We are just nearby the sea, and on the other direction we have the mountain. So in both direction we have very good views, the sea and the sea from one side and the mountain on another side. Uh, this, uh, we are, we are <coughs> expecting to join this uh, permanent facility by June 2024. And when we will join this uh, uh, facility, we, our intention is to extend our master to three additional, to three masters. And we would like to start another program where we will be training the best students from each region in mathematical sciences. And we, with this permanent facility, we will be able to accommodate about 150 uh, students <coughs> uh, per year. And without uh, forgetting up the mathematical science for the teachers, that we will also uh, start when we move to that uh, uh, facility and you see that uh, with this uh, facility we are already ahead uh, uh, to, to absorb the number of applications which is now about 600 with only 300 to be selected if we are able to select more this will solve already a big problem so i will ask uh, made we have some uh, tutor student and lecturers here i will allow them to say more about the uh, other details. Thank you very much. You're muted. <laughs> Tony, you're on mute. Tony, you're still on mute. You're still on mute. But I deduce that that was uh, many thanks to Daniel. I certainly appreciated it. Uh, I'm just seeing that Anthony, Tony's still finding, having fun with his mute button or unmute button. Um, I know that I'm next up on the program, and um, I have I also got some slides. Some of them cover similar similar material, and so um, I don't know whether there's a, a meeting controller who can unmute um, Tony. Uh, but in the meantime, um, I think what I'll do is I will share my slides. I can find where the dear old share button has got to on my other oh, there it is. So I, I get muddled when I flip between different things. I think I'm OK now, Jane, am I? Yeah. Am I OK? You're OK. I just need to. Uh... Can I just interrupt to start you? Many people will know Jane. She has been one of the most active members and supporters of of Cameroon for several years. Um, so she's a perfect person to give her talk now. Hello, Jane. She's Hello. From Wong, so can I just check? Are you seeing my? Is that is that showing okay? Jane, just before you start, can I say that we shouldn't worry too much about time. Some people may have to leave early, but for the sake of recording, I think we should just go on as 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 we plan. Thank you, Jane. Good. Good. Can you see my screen? Is it showing? Yes. Good. Yes. OK, as I said, um, uh, some of the information will repeat, so I may move slightly more quickly through it. Um, I've 
taught, I think, now 11 times at different aim centres. Um, so there are, I guess, mainly there are a lot of common themes. Um, let me just see if this will do a page down. Uh, no, OK. So I think Ames is amazing. It's, it's 20 years and Neil Turok founded it um, as a partnership project between various universities. And I like the summary that uh, Chris Brink gave. The idea that Neil unfolded <clears throat> seemed quite simple, very laudable and entirely unrealistic. But 20 years later, as Mama has shown, it's achieved a lot. Um, and the aim... Sorry to interrupt, Jane, but your, um, your presentation's going half in view, half out of view. I don't know if you can change that. Let me stop sharing and then try that again. Um, where is it? Uh... I'll go for entire screen to share now. Um, it's not letting me do that. Um, I think your screen's probably better now we've seen who you are. Well, that, that's what I thought I was doing. Um, Ah, OK. Right. So if I now That's vanish, perfect. vanish the teams and try to major the. Is that better? Yeah, that's good. OK. Um, <clears throat> and right. So, yes, we're, we're talking about the vision was to promote maths and science in Africa recruit and train students and teachers and build capacity. And I thought I'd include um, some images of where the idea started, Aim South Africa in Musenberg. Um, until Rwanda, it seemed that there was a deliberate theme of putting aim centres next to the sea, um, perhaps to attract people more to them. I think what I wanted to say from the point of view of somebody who's taught is a little bit about the students from my perspective. So we're talking about graduates in mathematical areas from most African countries. Um, so that means a couple of things. One, that there will be very different approaches to education across those different countries, just as a, there are very different approaches um, in across, for example, European countries. It means the, the first languages are English or French or Malagasy or Arabic. And the comment was that, of course, at least a third are going to be women. So if I interrupt my comments on students, just to give you an example of what happens. Um, Daniel mentioned that they're quite keen to have women lecturers. I think on a number of occasions, I might have been the first woman to be out as a lecturer. And so with Julia often, we've often run a session just on women in maths to compare notes um, on the challenges that people face. I think the challenges that women in Africa face um, are probably both similar to and different from challenges women might face in the Northern Hemisphere. So yes, the students We've got at least a third women, ideally fewer than a third are from the country of the AIM Centre. Um, it's good to have that mix. The idea is, as uh, Daniel and Mama have mentioned, this is partly about capacity development across Africa and peace building across Africa, opportunities to share common problems, which might not make much sense to some of us who come from a rather different background from outside. Each cohort usually has 12 to 20 nationalities. And I think it's worth emphasizing to people who are considering going out um, from privileged nations that 
is often quite a struggle to get an education. Primary education might be provided, um, but secondary education, let alone tertiary education, often involves a, a big commitment by people and their families to get through. And that means we're often talking about people who are quite a bit older than UK graduates would be coming into a master's degree. They may well be leaving a family behind. They may well be trying to save their allowances. They're not working in the easiest of circumstances. Um, and the motivation and commitment is very high. I think uh, perhaps the record was a student who actually walked from Angola to Cape Town. I think scholarships now include travel. Um, but what that, uh, that does mean is that um, th there can be quite substantial challenges for people who are there. The fact that the AIM centres are residential is quite important for women because very often it's not particularly safe for women to go out at night, which means that in an ordinary university they might not be able to go and access a library or a computer laboratory or something like that. So the residential aspect of the AIM centres actually provides quite a degree of freedom of movement and study. And this is the old Amos Garner. And um, again, you've already seen something about the course structure. Instruction is in English, um, which means that people are coming with French, Malagasy or Arabic also have to fit in some quite intense language teaching. Um, and people like myself, who can speak English very quickly on occasion, have to remember that we ought to be speaking uh, at a reasonable speed and clearly. In terms of the review courses, where the students, as has been said, are choosing two out of three courses, they'll be taught by visiting lecturers. And that means that as a visiting lecturer, you have a very good opportunity to meet colleagues from all over the world, uh, Europe, North America, Africa, Asia. Officially, there's 30 hours contact time, 10 hours per week, um, with 15 to 20 hours lecturing, 12 to 15 hours for tutorials, um, with the tutors to help with the tutorials, um, with computer based practicals and do the marking. But what I would say is that if you are able to go out and you're perhaps like uh, some of us, retired or partly retired, um, it's really good if you can spend more time. The students are very keen to come and talk to you. And if you're available, uh, that can be pretty much any time of, of the day and night. Students do work very hard. And the research essays are also really pretty important for students to get more of a feeling of what's happening. I think the other thing that's worth bearing in mind is the difference in tradition of teaching. Many of the students who come might be very skilled in mathematics, but there's much less of a tradition in problem solving. And in particular, a number of the um, students I know from Francophone Africa um, and, and tutors will comment on the fact that problem solving is really not something that they're used to. And so that's one of the things that I think is very important to teach and to communicate is what happens if you just give students a very open-ended problem. So I think my assignments are often seen as quite challenging because they are often quite open-ended. There's not an obvious right answer. Here we are in Ames, Cameroon. You might be able to spot Julia and myself in there, as well as perhaps have a look at the different range of nationalities from Africa that you can see. Why statistics? So I was particularly keen, like others, to found a um, cooperation with the Royal Sisca Society, because the reality is if you're a pure mathematician, very hard to get a academic career in pure mathematics. It's even harder. Um, I mean, it's often easier in statistics, but statistics and data science are actually essential to the sustainable development goals, to all those visions. You need the statisticians, as Daniel has said, in industry, in government, in education, 
there are opportunities in statistical and data science areas that there simply aren't for, say, pure mathematicians, theoretical mathematicians. And so if we want to contribute to helping people to have good opportunities to learn and use the skills we've taught them, then I think we do need to make sure we're offering across the AIMS family the opportunity for students to do statistics and data science. We have um, from the, the RSS um, support group, I know we've offered a wide range of statistical skills, inference, generalized linear models, time series, mathematical finance, spatial temporal model, epidemic modeling, climate modeling, randomized control trials, and so on. In terms of slightly more specialist focus, the, the data science stream at Cameroon is one of those. I know there's an artificial intelligence and machine learning stream in Senegal that's very well organized. And the malaria modeling and, and development of that into mathematical epidemiology, again, I think is something where RSS um, would hope to be able to offer a lot of support. Actually, in terms of mentioning women, there's a, something of a tendency to have more women in mathematical epidemiology and biostatistics. So the, the two things might go together, expanding epidemiology and statistics and increasing the number of women that are involved. There's another venture I was involved in, which is about African data science degrees, design and implementation. And there's ongoing work in that, which there's a limit to what I can contribute, but it's good to know it's carrying on. Something else that's happening that I hope will develop as a partnership is an international statistics and epidemiology, sorry, it's partnership, not project, um, which is a number of African research institutes and universities, um, sub-Saharan, collaborating with the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. That's aimed at mid-career people, but there is a link to AIMS and they are we are hoping to link people up to provide research essays, internship opportunities, and so on. Um, and I'll be trying to do that for the next AIM session. So we are on the lookout for lecturers, essay supervisors, PhD mentors, tutors. So the more we can spread the news about the excellent work that people like Daniel and Mama and the other center leaders are doing and get more volunteers, the better. So I might leave with another scene of mathematics from Ames, Cameroon, where we were getting comments about the fact we were in pullovers. I wouldn't like to be sitting outside working today in the UK, <laughs> but one can do that in Cameroon. So that's a brief overview of, of what it's like to teach, supervise essays, supervise PhDs. We're going to hear a bit more about tutors next. So I'll stop sharing and hand back to Tony. Thank you very much, Jane. That was a wonderful talk as well. Um, uh, the next item on our, our agenda here is to have some talk from a couple of uh, current Cameroon students, students which um, Daniel has arranged. They are here so we can understand what's actually happening in the nice warm Cameroon climate rather than the minus five degrees at night and not much more during the day in England at the moment. So hello students. Uh, you can start okay, talking. Hi. Say give your name and your country first and then a few comments. Okay, Dr. Daniel, can I go ahead? Yeah. Yes. Yes, of okay. course, Deborah. Okay. Um, I'm glad to be here. My name is Deborah Amos Adibu. I'm actually an AIMS alumni. I graduated this year, June this year. So I'm basically going to just say a few words about my experience at AIMS Cameroon. I would like to share my screen just to show some. Okay. 
Yes. Just to confirm if everyone can see my screen. Yes, yes, we can. Okay. Yeah, so as I said, I'm an alumni of Ames Cameroon. And speaking about the acad acad academic aspect of Ames Cameroon, I would say it's all encompassing because presently, um, doing another master's degree in France under the Erasmus Mundus Scholarship Program, and I was a data science student. The curriculum at Ames is all encompassing in such a way that I had hands on knowledge and skills, fundamental knowledge that is helping me in the course of study presently. I'm into a um, master's in photonics for security, reliability, and safety here in France. So that's for the academia, academic aspect. Also, it's, it opens up, um, will I say, an opportunity, an opportunity for students to be able to get scholarships to countries outside Africa, which is my testimony. And we also talk about um, the presentation skills, where we had presentations. It really helps me because it equipped me with that skill to be able to face a large congregation of people and be able to talk about um, a knowledge and, and trying to pass across. So benefits that I've, I've, I've gained from Ames Cameroon, one of them includes networking. Ames Cameroon opens up an avenue for networking in such a way that we are able to connect with our lecturers. Our lecturers, as Dr. Dani has said earlier, come from different parts of the world. And the most significant outstanding thing that stands out for me from the lecturers is that they are so humble. I've met with um, Prof. Jane. She taught me um, uh, data analysis. And I would say ha she and um, Dr. Uh, Prof., Prof. Julia were so humble to the core because at Ames Cameroon, whenever we are being taught and we have doubts about anything that we have been taught, we have the opportunity to actually reach out to our lecturers and ask questions. And they are always available to be able to um, explain further without any, without holding back or without, um, will I say, without putting it to us that they are very busy and can't attend to us or something. So they are always there to chit chat with us because we eat together in the same restaurant and we have opportunity to relate with them. Also, talking about um, the tutor and student rapport, Dr. Daniel mentioned one key, um, key point when he was presenting about the tutors, the tutors that are there at Ames Cameroon. I must say that they are really beneficial to students because outside academia, they also try to see how to um, carry everyone along, even as regards life experience. Most of them at my time were Ames alumni, so they had gone through the system and it was easy for them to be able to relate to what we are facing and be able to talk to us and guide us through the challenges we were going through. Uh, some of my tutors included uh, Dario and Joe. They were personally assigned to me as my tutors, and I really had a very great experience with them because they were down to earth and were always there, always there. Like all the tutors were usually always there to support our academic pursuits, both in the uh, both academic, as I said, and also life experiences. Another thing about Ames that really has helped me is teamwork. The teamwork spirit. I must say that I'm happy that I went through Ames because at Ames we had opportunities to to do assignments, presentations. As Dr. Daniels mentioned earlier, at the third week we had to do presentations. And one thing I must say is that I learned that I could not basically do a lot of things on my own. For example, I was um, I was like the student delegate at my time and. It came to a point that without to be able to carry a decision that carries everybody along, I needed to reach out to all my classmates. So that we'll be able to do 
the things together and go far. There's a proverb that says, if you want to, um, if you want to go uh, um, fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go with others. I will also add to it that if you want to go both fast and far, you have to go with others. Because when you have, um, I learned at AIMS that when I have um, everybody ar- along, we are able to think, it's, it takes little um, less time to think about a particular problem and find a solution to such a problem. Then we try to create balance between the academic, uh, 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 academic aspect and also the social aspect because it is, um, it requires a lot from students. The program actually requires a lot uh, from students in the sense that um, it tries to equip us in a broad, in a broad uh, spectrum and we needed to fit into it. So we had to try to find a balance to be able to see that we, we were not all that stressed and still perform well. And at, at some point, my, my cohort, we, we called AIMS um, African Institute for Minimal Sleep. That's because we, we basically had less time to be able to sleep. But then we tried to fix that by engaging in sporting acti- activities. Here, um, we had opportunity to, to do yoga with Prof. Jane. And these are all my colleagues. Some nice experience that I, I basically had at AIMS Cameroon. Another thing about Ames Cameroon that is significant to me and has helped me is making impact. The give back sessions, the club sessions, okay, like for the club sessions, Ames have tried to, to inculcate diversity and inclusion. Diversity in the such that in, in a sense that um, in my cohort, we were students from 18 different African countries. I I heard from Dr. Daniel's presentation that they are 13 now, which is quite sad, but my cohort were from 18 different African countries. And we tried to um, see that we um, it includes women in everything that is being done. Like for the gender club, we, we did some activities where we had uh, opportunities to 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 in, to to include women into the system because we know in Africa uh, most uh, w- most women are scared of getting into AIMS and um, into STEM. Sorry, but in my cohort, at least AIMS bro- um, um, admitted a lot of la- uh, ladies, a lot of women into the system, and I could see that there is strength in trying to um, know more about STEM. And yeah, that's about the inclusion. Then about the give back activities, um, it's a, it's a tradition in AIMS that when I, uh, while I was there, it was a tradition that we do give back activities just to at least we were on scholarship and at least we should show forth, no matter how small it was, no matter how little it was, to show forth from our um, our depths of resources and knowledge that we had received from AIMS for free to be able to give out in the little way we can. So at some point we had to visit um, the uh, those that had impairments. We visited the orphanages, and these are some of the pictures that showcase all that. And that has really made impact in my life because I've 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 learned to realize that in this life we can't do life alone. So like people need our help. All fingers are not equal. So definitely at some point in life, one may need one, uh, uh, another person's help. And we should always be willing to give a hand of help to anyone we meet. Then the food and culture. Ames treated us really good, I must say, because at Ames, we never cooked any meal. The kitchen was there to cook meals for us at all times. And that really also made me to understand that um, you might not value what you have until you lose it. Because now at France, uh, now in France, sorry, I have to cook all by myself at all times. And I'm usually stressed with uh, coursework. But then while I was at Ames, we all, we all, we just basically needed to just study. We were being pampered and we just basically needed to study. We had avenues where we had to cook our cultural del- delicacies since we were from different parts of Africa. We had opportunity to cook our different delicacies, enjoy with all uh, everyone. We also had session where we celebrated birthdays 
I, uh, here is a picture where we were celebrating uh, Prof. Jane's birthday while I was there. Uh, I think that was in January or February. I'm not very sure. I've forgotten which date exactly. But then we had opportunity to celebrate one another just to feel at home. Because yes, Ames is a family. Having people from different backgrounds, different uh, culture, we had to uh, adapt to the new environment and be able to relate to one, one another and show love and become a family. I said earlier that we had to uh, create balance between the academic and the, um, the, the daily life. So we, need, we, need, we needed to have time to, to distress. So one of the activities that we did also, apart from sporting activities, we visited the beach. We had the opportunity to visit the beach. Um, one of the picture here just shows, I think the one down, it was when Prof. Jane and Prof. Juliet took us out after their course, the, the block that we had their course. They just took us out, all the students, to be able to distress. So we had fun, we, we, we went, uh, we, we used a swimming pool. Then other pictures were opportunities where we had, where we had to be able to create time to distress, like visiting the beaches. So in general, Dr. Daniel talked about um, industry visit while he was presenting. And I experienced that because apart from studying, studying, you know, we had to see practically what was going on, like physically what was going on, going on because we had the, the hands-on skills. But we had to see physically what was going on. So we visited, we visited one of <clears throat> the industrial partners where we, we learned a lot about um, um, create, um, distribution of electricity. It was a thermal power plant anyway, but we learned a lot about how the system works and all of that. And I had the opportunity to relate with all the staff and st staff members, both ac academic and non-academic uh, staff members. And it was so pleasing because everybody there was um, looking out for the students' interest. And I was, and, and I'm, I am glad that I actually went through AIMS because, yeah, AIMS is one of my testimonies. Yeah, then this picture just shows, like, from the beginning to the end of how I, I mentioned earlier that my cohort mentioned that AIMS, we, we, uh, we tagged AIMS as an institute for minimal sleep. But then, despite minimal sleep, we achieved so much that, that catapulted us into the future as, as it has helped me that presently, I'm doing well. So I want to use the opportunity to also thank you to Ames and Ames Cameroon for this initiative. Thank you so much. Well, thank you very much, Radija. And that was a wonderful view of student life in Cameroon and how it's benefited you. And I'm sure we, we all are very grateful for your talk. Many thanks. Thank you so much. So now we move on. Um, I'm not sure whether we have another student contribution or not. Uh, Daniel. Ali. Daniel, do we have another student contribution? Malik. Okay. We wait for the change. Uh, if Malik is not ready, Malik, are you ready? I can see Malik's trying to talk. I can't hear. I can see Malik's circle on the screen. Uh, uh, we'll just give a minute because we know the communications are not instant. We're not hearing you, Malik. I see in the chat, but not. Uh, I look on the list. Yeah, I can I can see it's trying to communicate, but it's not actually coming through, Malik. It's down at the bottom of the screen. For me, the. Uh, we might have to slot Malik in at the end if she's still there. Yeah. So. 
I'm, let's do that. Uh, not worry about the time. Uh, we we want to rec we're recording this so we can edit out these uh, slight imprecisions in communication. And I'll call on Dario to to wind up his presentation. Well, to unwind his presentation. Hello. Hi. Can you hear me now? Yes. Can Hello. hear you, Dario, Hi. and see you. Yes. So can I go and share my screen then? Yeah. Um, So can you let me know if you're seeing this full screen? Well, I can see it perfectly in full screen and I can see an image of you as well. Perfect. OK, thanks then. Thanks, Tony. So hello, everyone. Um, yeah, so I mean, as Tony was saying, uh, I was a tutor there, so I would just like to share with you a little bit of my my experience at Ames, Ames Cameroon in particular. And I, I want you to kind of give you a feeling both of what it was from the, let's say, purely academic side, and uh, I think the equally important non-academic side, the, the life experience or the experience as, as, a, as a whole in itself. So just getting started, just a brief overview of how did I get to learn about the opportunity and how I came <clears throat> to Cameroon in the end. Uh, well, I learned about this from the volunteering section of the RSS uh, website and then just uh, slightly more than one year ago in September 2022, I met with Jane at the RSS conference. We spoke about the opportunity and then things developed very quickly. Just after a few days, I was put in contact with Daniel. I had an interview. The interview was successful and in January, off I was to Cameroon to start my my experience. It was the first time for me also in, in Africa in general. So <clears throat> if if you are a tu if you are um, thinking of going maybe as a tutor or even potentially as a lecturer, um, what what will you find? So as I was saying at the beginning, I think there are two very important aspects. Uh, one is the purely academic one and the other one is the everything else, essentially. So from the purely academic side, um, what and who will you find? Well, first of all, a great community of students that come, as we said, from all over Africa and that you can support in the most diverse ways. And I will say more about this later. And uh, you can, so you can give a lot to them, but you will receive a lot from them as well. Uh, but another important uh, component of the system is are the tutors and the whole staff. So you as a tutor there, you will share duties with the other tutors and you will be helped by them and in general by the academic staff starting from, from Daniel, the academic director. And a third component, key component, is as we said before, uh, the fact that academics from all over the world will come there. So you have the possibility to meet academics in pure maths and statistics in data science uh, coming literally from all over. And I chose this picture here because uh, I have to apologize that my face here is taking a relatively big uh, percentage of the space. But if you can, if you can neglect it, then you can see the three components here. You have all the students all around. Now, this is Edwin and in the back is Yolande, who are the two of the tutors that were there. And here we, you have also a great representation of the academics from all over the world with Jane and Julia, who uh, I believe are both on, on this call. Um, but as I said before, it's not all about um, academia, academia and uh, didactics, let's say. Uh, what you can find is definitely you will have a lot to learn about Africa, about African culture. And I want to stress how I said here Africa, not Cameroon, because you are in a highly international environment and you have the possibility of confronting yourself and your ideas with students that come maybe from Zambia or from South Africa or from Egypt. And in addition to that, you have plenty of opportunities to socialize, to go out with the tutors, for example, with the audio academic staff, and also to explore a little bit around the beauty of the of the nature. 
Um, so I put this picture here because after after a lot of phases before, here you have a picture that has almost all nature, but you can see there is a tiny thing here that is, this is a person. This person was the guy that I was with. He's not at all tiny, <laughs> he's fairly oh. tall, but this gives you an impression of the scenery and how big and beauty are all the plants there. So given that these are the two aspects, both academic and not academic, that I want to focus and to spend some words on, let's uh, go back to the first one, the academic point of view. So if you go, if you decide to go to Ames, to Cameroon as, as a tutor, what can you expect? Well, I think, I believe here that the, the, um, the thing really to keep in mind is that you are there for the students. You have a cohort of students, that uh, you you can help and and support really in different ways both from a purely uh, learning point of view in their doing some tutorials for example or also marking their quizzes their assignments but also providing more generally advice academic advice uh, uh, about possibilities phds master um, maybe cover letters so really, your role there is, is uh, fairly wide in terms of how you can support the students. And uh, so I'll come back just for a moment, because of course, in, uh, in doing this, there are some challenges as in every, as in every job. So I just thought to have a, a short slide about some of the challenges uh, that you may encounter in this. But when, when I think of it, I mean, I realize that many of the challenges come from something that Jane has actually already spoken about, which is the diversity of the students that you have in front of you. And I truly believe that diversity is, is not a challenge, it's actually a resource. It's a resource also from you in order to learn a lot about from the people that you have there. So this is why I actually decided to call this slide resources and challenges rather than just challenges. But I was saying people, the students come from all over Africa. So yesterday I produced this picture here um, where I have highlighted in green the nations from which the, the students in the cohort that I was dealing with were coming from. As Deborah said before, these are 18 different nations. And I think we are pretty safe in saying that, that they cover almost the entire Africa. So they will come with a often very different background, university. So mathematical wise, you may have very big differences from one student to the other. Another point that Jane has already spoken about is that differences are also present in the first language of the students. So relatively often, English may not be the first language, and it, sometimes the student may, may have a difficulty in expressing themselves in English, maybe asking a question and just not formulating it very easily. So you struggle to understand maybe what the question exactly is. But if you do understand, remember that when you speak, especially if you are an English native speaker, your accent will be difficult to understand for the students. And so you have just to bear this in mind constantly, try to speak slowly and check with the students that you are being understood. And more generally, I said, once you are there, if you dedicate yourself to the students, then you will be sought a lot for all different tasks that are both maybe advice in terms of job advice or internship advice, but um, as well, you may be asked to be the referee for a job application or for a PhD application, or to look at the cover letters, or as I did on a few occasions, maybe sit together two, three, four hours and prepare slowly an interview for a PhD or something similar. Um, in, in this slide, I just want to give you just one example of an, sort of one of these extras that happened to me actually towards the end of the period that I was in Cameroon. So one day, Daniel uh, called me and asked me just to look at the cover letters of six students that were applying for a fellowship. It's called the YAM Fellowship, but the name is not important. It was, it's, it's an internal, internal to AIMS fellowship. So, of course, I accepted. Uh, I knew that this would be a very intense job. On the first day, I think I spent four or five hours myself to look at these six cover letters uh, and just 
write down uh, some some suggestions. But then the day after, I we started at 10 a.m. with the students. Uh, one by one, I would talk to them, say things that they could improve, and then they would go and then do this, and then they would come back just one by one. As I was saying, I started at 10 a.m. on a day. Now, the picture on the top uh, was taken at 1.58 a.m. of the day after, uh, where I was still with three of them working on this. And then the picture below is past the 3 a.m. with some of these students and some other students that were in the uh, in the main room where they usually work, they were, that who were still up there and working. And I actually finished uh, with the last student, Wilson, who is this guy here. We finished at 4 a.m. So I had my 18 hours, literally no stop, except maybe half an hour for lunch and dinner, working together with them. Now, the reason why I put this slide is not to say, hey, you know, if you go there, be prepared to work at 2 a.m. No, that's not the case. But what I want to convey is that if you are if you are there and if you dedicate yourself to the student and you really want to help, then if you want to stay up till 1, 2 or 3 a.m. with them and help them, you definitely have the possibility and the gratitude, you will feel it even as I am doing now, even after six or seven months, when they still get get back to you and ask how you're doing. Each single of them wrote to me saying, uh, well, I think four or five, Daniel may know this exactly, that they were accepted in this YAM application. So, I mean, it's an intense effort, but definitely you get back a lot. Now, um, um, just a, an overview instead of uh, the other side, uh, the non-academic side, all the extras, as I said. Tony, just to check, I, I, I realize I'm slightly late. I have another three or four minutes. Is this okay? Or? That's, that's absolutely fine. Carry, okay. carry on. Uh, okay. We appreciate all your effort. Perfect. So just from the, from, from the fun point of view, um, first, let's start from inside aims. Now, the students uh, will love a lot to, to sing, to play music, to play also football about once a week. There is a table tennis in the main room where we have lunch and dinner, so there will always be people there at lunch and dinner just playing. On another occasion, um, Sylvain, the, the lead tutor, and myself then organized a maths game. So this picture here is uh, is taken during this maths game. And you can see Deborah, who just spoke here. And I think in general, you can see that the students are, are enjoying this this time. Um, I, I have here a short video. It's, it's only 20 seconds, uh, but I decided to put just to uh, show you a little bit of what, to give you a feeling of what it can be to be there. Um, this video was taken during lunch and you will see one of the students playing um, a keyboard. Now, this keyboard was bought by Sylvain and myself uh, for us, but from time to time we would just give it to the students uh, to let them play or play all together and sing. So this is the room where we have lunch. So the video, as I said, is only 20 seconds, but uh, I hope it can convey you a little bit of the feeling of what it is uh, sometimes to stay all, uh, all together there. Um, let me see if, okay. I hope you can hear. I hope you could hear this. Um, yeah. yeah, that's great because we were having some problems before. Great. So, oh, sorry. Um, just to kind of sort of finish then my my talk. Uh, I was talking about opportunities to have fun and to to do experiences outside aims. Now, this slide here is about something that. Uh, is indeed independent of AIM. So this is something that I decided to do myself, but I decided to share it um, because what, what is it about? This is about myself having decided to go to two primary schools that I had never been at and introduce the kids there to probability. Uh, but of course, not through uh, weird formulas, 
but through games and a lot of chocolates. And I also took with me two Ames students to support myself there. And the reason why I put this is that I felt that while I was at Ames in Cameroon and, you know, I was being very welcomed, it was also nice to give back a little bit to the community that was welcoming myself. And if you do want something like this and you have initiative for any activity that you want, be also sure that you will get support from Prof Mama and from Daniel in an activity that you want to do to give back to the community. And here you can see in the top picture uh, myself with this uh, with these pupils they are just carrying on this this game and they were very excited. And then I am very affectionate to this picture here on the bottom because this these are students that I had let I mean pupils that I had met just two hours earlier, never seen in my life before. Uh, but you could see how much they can they can give back to you in terms of their happiness, in terms of their joy. And you see here one of the of the little chocolates that I was giving them. Uh, so now to conclude, when I was talking about extra academics and fun activities, these two pictures here depict the first one myself with all the tutors. So you will be with all tutors there and there are plenty of possibilities to go out, to eat out or to, um, to go to a pub in the evening, something like this. And you also have plenty of opportunities to explore the nature around. I showed you a picture at the very beginning and I show you another one here. This is actually the, the little three, uh, almost the dots here are three people. This is myself, um, a lecturer and a tutor uh, that were climb when we were climbing Mount Cameroon. This is the highest peak of West Africa. It's more than four kilometers high. And you can clearly see that we are already above the clouds here. So, well, just to conclude, uh, I think my experience was amazing. If you want to go there, just do it. Remember to try to be of help to the students as much as you can. At the same time, to enjoy also your time both inside and outside aims. And of course, in order to do that, just go and, and apply. That is all from me. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Daniel. Dario, that was a really wonderful discussion and presentation and we're very grateful for it. Um, let us continue and uh, not again not worry about the time uh, and ask ask Joe um, if he's there and connected to I have think. his say about his time in Cameroon. Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Fantastic. Yes. Share my screen. OK, shall I get going? Yep. I okay. should to say you're, you were from University of Bristol when you, when you were there, and you're now going off to University of Seattle. Um, welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yes, so at the start of this year, um, I, was, um, I knew that I was going to finish my PhD. Uh, my background is in maths um, and uh, more recently machine learning. And I must confess, I hadn't heard of Ames before, uh, or before before this year. Uh, but after some some quick internet research, I found all these amazing resources and websites um, which tells me about, which told me about Ames, and in particular, Ames Cameroon. Uh, and it looked a really exciting opportunity. And like Dario, the process was very fast. I got in contact with Tony and Jane. Uh, they were great over email. Uh, then I spoke uh, to Daniel. Uh, and uh, managed to uh, get seven months funding to go to uh, to Gage Cameroon uh, as a tutor. This was in uh, May and June, so taking over Dario and even Dario's supervision group. Uh, so this is actually me with some of those four of the seven um, students in the supervision group. So there's Leonard here on the left from Kenya. Uh, it's a fantastic thing. I don't Leonard. think we are yeah. seeing this, Joe. Oh, you're not. Uh, oh, at least sorry. myself, I'm not. Ah, well, I'm seeing it. Okay. Okay, then that's fine. Maybe it's just because I was sharing it and my laptop has a problem. Then sorry to interrupt. I, I, I cannot see it too. Ah, okay, ah. you can't either. Okay, good. Me, uh, <laughs> well, I can see Joe, but I 
I don't know. Oh, no, I think I think now it should be OK. Yes, that's got you both. So here we yes, are. yes, that's your right. Presentation and your. So here is uh, here is some of our, our, our students in my, mine and Derry's uh, teacher group, really. So on the left here, this is Leonard, I was pointing out from Kenya. We have Dorcas uh, from Zambia. We have Deborah, who we've, uh, who, who's been speaking uh, just before Dario. Um, we also have Loic here, oh, sorry, yeah, Deborah from Nigeria and Loic from uh, Cameroon. And so I was spending seven weeks there, the essay period, so this was after um, all of the courses and exams, and this is where they have six weeks to dedicate themselves to projects uh, proposed by a supervisor, either, um, Proposed locally in Cameroon or proposed by a supervisor abroad um, with contact remotely and I was there to kind of uh, help through that essay process because I think for a lot of them this was their first uh, maybe big independent projects uh, and it required lots of independent research. Uh, right so we've had uh, some great uh, stories and lots of great statistics about AIMS Cameroon. I'm just going to really give you a very brief summary of my time and uh, my kind of uh, the, the the themes that I witnessed. So actually, I've written down three themes uh, that I experienced in Limbe in, uh, in Ames, Cameroon, and these are kind of things that I think are very positive and I wish to continue. Uh, and the first thing I have written down is hard work and talent. Uh, so these things uh, are, I think, that um, very much associated to Ames, Cameroon. We saw just how competitive it was to get into the program, uh, and once you're there. As I arrived uh, from the UK from my kind of three year slumber PhD mode uh, where things go very slowly, <laughs> I was put in this environment which is extremely dynamic uh, and it was very notable just how much these students uh, wanted to work hard and just how, um, how, how knowledgeable they were in what they were doing. Uh, so frequently there were late night study sessions. This picture here is a group session. Uh, uh, with this girl, I think Stephanie, uh, help, uh, preparing her oral presentation in front of a group. Um, and as well as the hard work, the actual content of what they were doing was, uh, I think, really impressive. And I was actually, um, I was kind of pleasantly surprised by what I was, uh, I was seeing. So you'd get uh, very involved and uh, applicable uh, projects, uh, which, which which are really nicely kind of related to maybe African uh, problems specifically. Uh, so for example, one of my students, Michael, uh, was looking at uh, the sentiment analysis from African newspapers. Uh, Dorcas from Zambia, who you saw previously, uh, she was doing uh, a project of, of mathematical modeling on, uh, on malaria, uh, the dynamics of malaria. Uh, and however many students, uh, all other 60 students or so, were doing equally uh, amazing work. Uh, right, the second thing I want to talk about, uh, so this was all on the academic side, and we've heard lots about the academic side, uh, but I also want to talk about uh, what struck me perhaps even more was the non-academic side. And this was the sense of uh, my second theme, integration ad and adaptability. So I think it's really important to emphasize that AIMS uh, isn't just you know, a place where courses are delivered and lectures are given. Um, but it's really it enforces a lifestyle onto these students uh, that they would have possibly been quite unfamiliar with before. So I'm ashamed to know that I did actually realize AIMS was not just for Cameroon students, but for all African students um, until quite late. So I was, uh, it was great basically being in this atmosphere where I think there was 50% Cameroon students, but 50% international students. So I mentioned from Kenya and Zambia, but from all over uh, Africa, as we saw from uh, Dario's uh, map. And these students, I was, uh, what was really nice to see is seeing these young students who perhaps had never even, uh, what, who perhaps had not left their country or even left their local region within their country, moved this quite different environment and, uh, and succeed so well in integrating themselves within not only AIMS, but the wider community and uh, TAN in Cameroon. So we mentioned some outreach projects before. I think you've seen this picture a couple of times. So they invited me uh, with them uh, to their this charity day uh, in the, this, I think, uh, the, this disabled community in Limbe. So lots and lots of food was donated. 
Uh, this was organized by, uh, I think it's called Masterclass, uh, Mastercard uh, cohort of students, um, I think led by potentially Michael and um, Antonia and others uh, also from Nigeria. Uh, but also along with all uh, these different projects, you, you have this sense of the students doing also other activities in life uh, together and, and bringing out the best in each other. And I was lucky enough to co uh, consistently be invited to their football sessions. Uh, this is an afternoon session. There would frequently be a 6 a.m. session, which which was hard work. But this was as the sun was setting in Limbe and the temperature was was getting to, to, to more friendly levels. Um, uh, so this was at the nearby hospital and uh, it was always a great scene uh, uh, at the hospital playing football and great to hang out with all of them. Um, so yeah, I, I just want to emphasize this, this this overall lifestyle that I think is very important to maintain at Ames and make sure these students feel like they have the um, resource and time to experience kind of life in Cameroon or life in a different culture or uh, uh, environment in all kinds of ways. Uh, all right, that's my second theme, integration and adaptability. And the final theme, which is possibly the most important, uh, and what maybe we could learn a lot about in Europe is love and support. Um, so the student camaraderie and teamwork that I witnessed uh, was 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 uh, quite frankly second to none in in, in any kind of um, school environment I've been in. Uh, you have students constantly uh, looking out for each other. There was this nice story. Uh, there was this girl called Rose from Uganda. And she was sick at the start and having a difficult time at Ames Cameroon. But she told me that it was thanks to the generosity and care that her fellow students were giving her, you know, fetching food for her in bed and being with her and helping her do her homework next to uh, uh, next to her, uh, that she did stay in Ames and she completed um, she completed the course in June uh, and, and she passed really well. Um, and I also put these couple pictures in to kind of. <laughs> also show kind of demonstration of this, this camaraderie and uh, what you can do in the team. So Deborah mentioned earlier uh, how you can maybe only, you can go fast by yourself, but you can go far uh, when you're together. And I uh, was lucky enough to have 20 students, so quite a few of us join me on a trip to Mount Cameroon in my final week. And uh, I'm sure that it's because it was kind of funny because when I asked them individually, they were all very unsure and I was actually expecting only two or three. But I'm sure this this, this group mentality, this co cohesion that's afforded by um, such a number of um, um, uh, ambitious and, and uh, uh, ambitious people that they can do things like climb Mount Cameroon. So Mount Cameroon is far to climb. Uh, and this girl looks like she's having a nice time. This is Antonia from Nigeria. Uh, but this was about maybe uh, oof, nearly nearly 2,000 meters uh, above sea level at this point, and she's struggling. But she managed to get to the uh, infamous hut three after this, uh, I'm sure thanks to uh, the help but, uh, given by her colleagues. And then, yes, we all, uh, even the next morning, some of us managed to even get to the summit. Uh, and there's a very, very strong bond. Um, so yeah, this is all I kind of want to uh, emphasize is what I think of the most, what, what I think, what, what I what I really enjoyed about Ames and also what I hope to continue uh, for the future because I think these, uh, these kind of um, um, all round experiences for the students are vital for kind of, for promoting them as, the next generation of leaders and future adults um, in this this changing world. Uh, so yeah, I would just like to thank uh, all those who made it possible for me to, to, to take part in this program. Thank Prof Mama and Dr Daniel um, and, and also my students as well. Deborah, thanks for being here uh, and thank you. Well, thank you, Joe. This is another very impressive talk and we're very grateful to hear of these wonderful experiences and uh, I think you've you've both said a lot about the students but I'm sure the students will be were wonderfully pleased to have tutors such as yourselves in the in their course very very good well we're getting near the end I think now 
I, I'm not trying to curtail the time here because I, I, I can see how much effort everyone has put into their presentations this afternoon. Um, and I would like to know whether Malik is, is available to have his. We couldn't get him before. Uh, um, so anybody know if Malik is, a, is around and wants to talk? He's still on the... <clears throat> He's yes, he's still the there on the on the thing. But I can I take off his uh, it seems we can't get him, doesn't it? Unfortunately, Usually you yes. can't unmute him, so it should have it should be himself to unmute. Um I've unmuted him. Are you uh, I think. <coughs> Malik, will you hear us? Is Malik there? It seems not, doesn't it? A anybody do anything very wonderful to get Malik? I'll, I've tried changing him to a presenter role, um, but I don't know if that's... No. Daniel. We maybe re try and record a piece for him at some later date and tag it on. But OK, but what I'd like to do finally is just to thank all the speakers this afternoon. And, and I can see how much time they've put into their presentations. Er every every person that's spoken, wonderful slides, very informative and really shows what what aims is all about in a fantastic way and just from my own experience it was it was so nice to see these pictures again that were shown so thank you very much everybody it was really splendid i'm very impressed by the amount of time you were able to put into giving your and preparing your presentations and it just shows what a great institution aims is so thank you very much for everything and um, goodbye. And I hope you don't mind it lasting a bit longer. We did have a few communication issues, but that didn't really seem to trouble things at all. So many thanks. Thank Great. you. Thank you. Thanks to you. Bye, bye, everyone. Bye, bye. bye Daniel. Bye, bye, everyone. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, Julia. Bye, bye. Thank you.